Oh, I am so nervous for this video. Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. I have exciting news. I bought a new camera. I'm still processing that I actually went through with the purchase. Now, I have been wanting a new camera for the longest time. Before YouTube, really after I graduated college, which was four years ago, photography has always held a special place in my heart, especially on my mom's side of the family. Like my grandfather and my uncle were super big in photography and I've obtained that passion and love for it as well. My first camera I got when I was like, ooh, I think I was like five. It was a Barbie Polaroid camera and I was obsessed with that. I took pictures of everything to the point where my parents had to cut me off because Polaroid is not cheap. So they bought me like this rinky dink digital camera, which I still have somewhere. It got me through until I was 14 when I got my first DSLR camera. It was a Sony Alpha, which I still have to this day. When I graduated college I bought my Nikon which I use to film all of my previous videos. I still have a bunch of pre-filmed footage that I still plan on using and now I have my dream camera which is the Canon 5D Mark IV. I'm still learning how to use it. It is definitely a bad boy camera. It is intense. If a camera can be sexy it is this camera. So that is my camera spiel but in today's video we are unboxing and trying on all the products from May May 2019's Ipsy Glam Bag Plus. I did purchase an add-on as well. I'm really excited about the add-on. I think the add-on product is gonna be like the product I'm most excited for. I'll link April's unboxing and try-on in the comments and also in the card section because it's foreshadowing for my add-on. So without further ado, let's open up Okay, we got the blue foam. My box falls apart every single time. I don't know what it is. Ooh, yes. You see, oh god, oh, all my products are gonna fall out, but you see why? Got another Lovecraft Beauty item, which I'm so excited for. I cannot put that blush down. Let me just get situated over here. Throwing stuff, I'm disrespecting my surroundings. And we got our card. We got one skincare item, and then we have five makeup items to discuss. We'll start with skincare. I think it's kind of funny and a weird coincidence that both BoxyCharm and Ipsy featured some Glam Glow products. This is the Glam Glow Bubble Sheet Oxygenating Deep Cleanse Mask. I love Glam Glow products, but I have not tried their sheet masks before. As I mentioned in a couple of videos, I love the Glam Glow White Jar Mask. It is so nice, and it really helps my blackheads in this area instead of using like a pore strip. And that cleanser we got in BoxyCharm has been really good, actually. It reminds me a lot of how Purity by Philosophy cleanses. Very similar. I love just how it breaks down and melts makeup in like a cleanser form as opposed to using a balm like Elemis or Clinique's or Drunk Elephants and pharmacies. We're not going to forget pharmacy this time. This values for $27 for three. So they're $9 each. To me, it's a little pricey for a sheet mask because Ipsy does like a bunch of daily deals under the Ipsy shopper feature. That's when I like to stock up on my sheet masks because they will have all these different brands and you get like 12 sheet masks for $12. So it evens out being a dollar a piece. And that is a lot of sheet masks. It will last me a while, but Glam Glow is a prestige skincare brand. It is definitely on the pricier side. And you're just like, this little sheet is $9. I'm really intrigued because I haven't tried any bubble masks before. I have a Momande one in my bathroom that has been sitting there since the Ulta Love Your Skincare event. I've just been a little nervous to try it. I don't know. I guess for me, it's hard for me to wrap my head around bubbles is supposed to be like really helping purify your face. We'll give these a shot and we'll see. Moving on to makeup. I don't have any makeup on. This is the Yenza Tone Up Primer Essential Glow. I haven't heard of Yenza. I don't know anything about that brand. I like to use the Gerard Cosmetics BB Plus Illuminator. That's what I like to use as a primer before going in with foundation and just gives like you a nice glowy radiant look to your foundation. So I'm excited to see how this works. Let's do a swatch. I'm gonna just put a little bit on my finger and that's what it looks like on my finger. 
I don't think I put enough on. Oh wait, now I just made it go away, rubbing it in my skin. Okay, you can kind of see it on my arm. There it is. I don't know if it was supposed to disappear that fast or it was just absorbing into my skin. I'm gonna place some on my Luxie 510 foundation brush and that's how we are going to spread the foundation around. Primer around, excuse me. I saw the word foundation on the brush and immediately thought foundation. I guess I could have spread that a little bit better. I don't know, it just soaks in super fast. I kind of see an illuminating glow to that cheek compared to this one. The best way I can describe how this primer feels is that it feels very similar to the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer and then the Benefit Professional Primers. It's not doing a bad job. It has a definite glow layer. Like I can definitely tell where this primer has been. Kind of has like a faint pinky purpley illuminizing glow to it. So we'll see how it works with foundation. I'm not too crazy about the primer right now. It doesn't really wow me. It feels hydrating, not super hydrating, like my Ofra Cool as a Cucumber primer or my Maybelline Master Prime. Those are like super, super hydrating. But I want it to perform like my Touch and Soul No Pore Bloom Primer. That primer retails for $35. $35 to me is a little expensive for a primer where my Ofra and No Pore Bloom ones are about $20 and they have lasted me a long time and you get one fluid ounce. So for foundation, I'm gonna take the Clinique Even Better Makeup and I have the shade Beige. I got this during a Ulta Diamond Perk. So I'm really excited to see how this works. And I'm gonna take my Sigma 3D HD Max Kabuki brush to apply. Oh, that was a lot of foundation. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. This is like a very true to my skin tone color. I like that. But it's a little sheer. I wonder if we can build that up. I have used a Gerard Cosmetics just applying that first and then foundation and it works out fine, but I haven't tried mixing the two together and then. I just feel like I need to put that primer on first. And I did not do my pre-layer, so we'll definitely see how well this primer does. So I look shiny in some areas. That must be like the illuminizing effect from the primer. It's enhancing areas that I don't really want to be enhanced. It looks like I just slapped grease all over my face. You can definitely see like the illuminating effect, especially in my T-zone. The one area I don't really want to see illuminating because it could be mistaken for grease. I think the primer did a good job adhering to the foundation. Blend it in quite nice. All right, we're gonna need to set this. I'm gonna take my Laura Geller Balance and Brighten Foundation on a Morphe G36 brush. Sometimes I just like to take a powder foundation to set and also I'm wondering if it could help decrease the illuminizing effect just because it is a little much for me. I think that helped a little bit. Up next, we're gonna take the Lovecraft Beauty Bronzer Palette. I am so excited for this face palette. All right, let's open it up. Yes. And these are what the shades look like. We'll do some swatches. Ooh, yes, these are super pigmented. These look like it's gonna be a lot of fun to use. We have Cymbeline, Suniva, and Editia. I think that's how you say them. I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. And we're gonna take a Morphe E34 brush to apply. So I don't know how much this retails for. This was an add-on. I'm going to estimate probably around $35. I think that's how much the blush palette was. And I think I'm gonna take the shade Suniva. Ooh, there's a lot of kickback. I know reminds me of when I tried the NYX Cosmetics matte bronzer. A lot of kickback happened. Threw me off guard because I don't really expect a lot of kickback from bronzers. Let's see if we can just tone this down a little bit. I think this would be really nice for the summer. Just with like that glowy look and now we're adding some bronze. This bronzer is really nice. It's super easy to blend. I'm not really running into any issues. Which is going on quite nice. Just hitting the places that I want to be hit. If any of you guys have a round face, did any of you guys watch Alyssa Ashley's tips and tricks for round faces? Cause I'm thinking of wanting to try some of those. I wanna just see how that video could help. I am a little insecure about my round face, especially with gaining a little bit of weight over the past few years. I'm a little nervous for Cymbeline. I think it might just be a little too light for me. It reminds me of the light hula bronzer. 
and then Aditya reminds me of the Morphe bronzer that I went a little crazy on during my BoxyCharm unboxing and try on. I really like this bronzer palette. I thought the pans were a nice size and that the shade was really easy to blend. Wait, I did swatches on my finger and I didn't even swipe them down. Oh my gosh, what am I doing? Need coffee, send help. Take two. And that's what the swatches look like. For bronzers, these are really pigmented. I'm glad it was an add-on option because I really like the blush. And that's what we're gonna use to blush up. I'm gonna throw you guys off for a loop and use my Luxie 514 blush brush. And I think for this look, I'm gonna try Dauphine. I still haven't used that blush yet. I really like Oscalia. Ooh, wait, this is actually really nice. With this bronze glowy look. Plot twist. This is a makeup tutorial on a radiant bronze dewy look for the summer. I think this blush and that bronzer complement each other well. Yes. Aside from like looking a little too greasy, I'm actually really liking this look. And then for highlight, I'm going to take my Ulta Marvel highlighter and I think I'm going to take the shade Become a Legend. I feel like I'm just like beaming right now. I'm still shook that this is an Ulta highlighter. I actually bought a couple more because they were on sale for $5 and it was buy two, get one free. I would definitely recommend Ulta highlighters. And the formula was just the same as this Marvel one. And I was like, what? Definitely am interested in trying some more Ulta Beauty products. Their bronzer and blushes had good reviews as well. So if you've tried any of their products, let me know. And if there are any more Lovecraft Beauty products, cause that's a fairly new brand to me as of last month, I need more. I would love to see if they have a highlighter palette because got the bronzer, got the blush, just add the highlighter and we're good to go. I am nervous for the next product actually. First we need to fill in the brows. I'm gonna take my Benefit Goof Proof brow pencil. And if I sound nervous, it's because I am, because it's my first video with my new camera. I just want everything to go over well. It meets my expectations. Otherwise, I'm gonna cry. I was hanging out with Catherine the day that I bought it. The last thing I told her, I was like, I bought the camera. And her face dropped. She was like, no. I was like, yeah, I did. I did. I'm in denial. That's why I'm telling you right before we break. Now I'm taking the ColourPop Brow Boss Gel to set. Part of the reason why I was one on ahead and decided to buy it now is because back in January when I was looking at this camera on Best Buy's website it had a free gift with purchase which gets me all the time at Ulta and it was a battery grip which is really good for photography you put in two of the batteries into the grip and that way you don't have to keep changing it out and it also is supposed to extend your battery life that alone a battery grip is $350 that promotion came back and when I saw that I was like it's a sign placed my order and Griffin texted me immediately after because I used it through his Best Buy account and he was like did you buy the Mark IV and I was like yes I'm having slow regrets he was like why I'm just like I was like first of all we were hit with 21 days of beauty the Sephora sale and now I just bought a camera but now I feel like satisfied I don't feel the need to like buy anything right now I mean yes I'll still get like my normal subscriptions but I have like no urge to want to go buy clothes or anything except for like the necessities like I have to pay my bills or I gotta buy gas and food but I have what I have right now like from all those sales I just mentioned so I'm just like I can finally calm down I have a new camera I can play with I'll be good I will be okay if I don't spend money right now so the next product we have the Wander Beauty Wondrous Seascape I have yet to find a Wander Beauty product that has worked out for me so I'm always nervous on trying this brand okay so the color story is interesting and this is what the color story looks like I'm not too crazy about it but we can make it work. We get one matte shade and five shimmers. So let's just do some swatches and we'll put it on the eyes. Okay, so it looks pretty pigmented. We have Champagne Harbor, Sea Salt, and Golden Reef. There was a little bit of kickback. There's some fallout. Oh, I like these. Wait, those are cute. I was a little nervous because the cheek palette that we received in a boxy Lux was really, really chalky. So I was like, I hope these eyeshadows aren't chalky. And then we'll do bottom row. Yeah, like that one felt chalky. But these shimmers feel super nice. Ooh, that blue is stunning. I don't know why my fingers are so dumb. Okay, just ignore them. So we have Sand Dollar, Sea Foam, and Coastal. I'm really nervous to make a look. I really want to use that blue, but it scares me a little bit. 
Wow, all of the eyeshadows swatched super nice. There is pigment throughout all of the swatches. There's still pigment on my fingers. The blue one kind of tailed off at the end, but I'm not too concerned or worried about it. So it's like a rainbow, essentially, just minus purple, which is a little rude because I love purple. Today could be the day. Today's the day! The sun is shining. The tank is clean. I'm gonna take a Sigma E55 eye shading brush. I think I'm gonna take sea salt and I'm just gonna put this everywhere. I mean, I could have used Sand Dollar as a transition shade, but I haven't been doing that recently. I've just been like skipping the transition shade and just going right into whatever I feel like doing. So I'm having to build this up. I am going to need some eyeliner. I'm going to take my NYX retractable eyeliner to put on my waterline. And then I'm going to take my Sigma E30 pencil brush. To recap, I took sea salt and put it all over my lid. And now I'm going to take the shade Coastal to smoke out my lower lash line. I really like this blue. I'm just a little nervous for it. Oh, too much blue. Uh, too much lower lash line. Holy crap. What did I just do? I'm going to try that again. I'm going to try a Morphe E36. Well, I thought a pop of blue was gonna look cute and uh, way too much. Wait, I got some in my eye. Don't mind me, we just have a really bold lower lash line for this look. I feel like I look a little scary. It could be cute, maybe. I am gonna take some MAC Fix on the Sigma E30 brush. Originally was gonna do the blue with. Let's take the shade Seafoam and we'll place that in our inner corner. This color's kind of cute in the inner corner. Didn't even need to put eyeliner on my waterline. You can't even see it no more with all that blue. The palette wasn't bad. It's not my favorite. I don't know if I'll get a lot of use out of it. I feel like I need to pair this with some other palettes. Take some Kat Von D tattoo liner. I think this one's almost out because I saw it in my BoxyCharm video and I was like, ooh girl, that eyeliner is dying. I just want to use it up. I think this is like the first Wander Beauty product I will actually get use out of. I've received two of their mascaras. I've decluttered both of them. I decluttered that cheek palette and I decluttered the peel off mask. Those didn't work out well for me, but I think this is going to be the first where I don't declutter. I just have to pair it with some other palettes, which is kind of annoying, but then it's not because I have a bunch of ColourPop Super Shock shadows that these might work out well with. Please, I have my first Wander Beauty product. I always see them being raved about and I'm just like, why? Why don't you work for me? But we got one. That palette retails for $25. I think that's a little excessive, but essentially you can look at it as you buy that palette and then like the rest of the items with the exception of the bronzer were free. Just for six shades, I don't think a palette is worth $25. It's almost like $5 a shade, which isn't bad because like that's how much like a super shock shadow is. Why spend on this tiny Wonder Beauty palette where you can spend like the same amount of money and get a Morphe palette with 35 shades? That's just my way of looking at it. The next product we have the Il Maquillage. I think that's how you say it. Mascara. This also retails for $25. I have not heard of this brand before, but it says Icon High Volume and Intense Curl. I'm not going to use any eyelash primer. I'm just going to go right in. This is what the wand looks like. You've heard of this brand before. What other products do they have? It lengthens really nice. I see a little volume going. I don't really see much of a curl, which I don't really care about a curl. That's with one coat. That's not too bad. This formula doesn't feel as well wet as some mascaras can feel. It feels like on the drier side. It's not clumpy. I guess I stabbed myself with some eyeliner or mascara on my eyelid. That's cute. I just look like a mess and it's okay. We're rolling with it. And then we got these Il Masqua. I think that's how you say it. Lip coloring pencil duo in the shades Lust and Media. I think it's a little excessive that they're stuck together. I have really been enjoying lip pencils recently. I got the Vintage Cosmetics one from Boxy 
BoxyCharm. And I've also been using my Gerard Cosmetics ones and my LA Girl Cosmetics. So we got things in pairs. We got three Glamour masks. We got two lip pencils. I guess they really wanted the value of the box to be good. $21 each. That's really expensive for a lip pencil. Gerard Cosmetics just did a $5 sale of their lip pencils, which is a really good deal. Really good formula. Looks like we got both a pink and a red lip pencil. Cool. The pink one is media and the red one is lust. Fitting. This is media. I'm gonna just put on my hand. What media looks like. The tip of the crayon kind of broke on me. That's why there's like that little like sheer moment on the swatch. And then let's swatch lust. They look super similar to each other. Okay. But I'm going to take the shade Media and I'll apply Media to my top lip and then Lust to my lower lip. Kind of hard to like move around. It's not as creamy as the Vintage or the Gerard Cosmetics. It's a little tougher. like overlining my lips on accident. And they keep breaking on me. Is it me or is it them? And we're gonna have a little bit of flake to the lips because they are slightly chapped. What else is new? I just have dry everything no matter what I do. So not too like, ooh, about the lip pencils. To me, I think there's other options out there. $21 is a little excessive. I believe the Gerard Cosmetics ones are 17. The vintage ones were around the same price as the Ella Mosqua ones. And then the LA Girl, is the most affordable option. It's also retractable, which is nice. I think that's like a more creamier formula. I'm gonna take this Gerard Cosmetics Supreme Lip Cream in the shade Wildberry Tart. I've been really loving these. We need a little hydration after these lip pencils. So applying on the swatch, they look very similar, but now looking at my lips and after I applied on my lips, you can definitely tell there was a difference of being more pink than more red. So May's box, I think there were some good products in it but I'm not crazy about it like I love mascara primers all that but I just don't think the brands really met my expectations I definitely see the illuminating effect with this and I just don't like it I think I just look a little too greasy than I do dewy and illuminated I think that's my verdict the eyeshadow palette wasn't too bad it's just I couldn't really come up with an idea of like a full-blown look instead of just putting like one shadow one shadow and one shadow because I need like some other palettes. I need more mattes and this palette is predominantly shimmers and then like the one matte that you get is a transition shade which is helpful but it's just not enough for me to really tap in to creating a look. These lip liners they're just meh. There's something special about them. Like I already have some options that I really like and they're more affordable with the exception of the vintage one. The mascara wasn't bad it's just not my favorite. I think maybe with like my Lancome XL booster I will like it a little bit more but my favorite product was my add-on. I was super excited to see this as a add-on feature for May and I think it complements their blush palette really really nice. Definitely would like to see a highlighting palette next if they don't already have one. I already get a lot of use out of the blush and I know I'm gonna get a lot of use out of the bronzing palette. And then the only product we didn't test out are these Glam Glow masks which I'm really excited to give a whirl because I love Glam Glow. They have really great products. Glam Glow does have really good skincare so I have high hopes. I just haven't used a bubble mask before and this is a bubble sheet mask so I'm like oh this is a little weird. But let me know what products you got in your Ipsy Glam Bag Plus. Did we get similar products? What were your thoughts on the products? Did you have a similar experience like me? This concludes today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Give this video a thumbs up if you like Ipsy, unboxings, try-ons, first impressions. Let me know in the comments below what was your favorite product that I received? What products did you get? Do you have Ipsy Glam Bag Plus or do you get the normal Ipsy glam bag subscription. If you get Ipsy and BoxyCharm, which one did you think was better for the month of May? Please make sure you're subscribed before you leave and I'll see you in the next video.